Alrighty, good evening everybody. Welcome to Heroes of the Storm. My name is Sparhawk. I'll be your caster for tonight. Um, tonight I have two exciting teams to watch, the Baddest Dudes and Phoenix Rising Sapphire. Um, let's quickly get into the map choices. Um, so I'm just going to play some intros and I will see you on the other side.
Alrighty, and as we can see, um, Baddest Dudes won the coin toss, and uh, so the vans for Phoenix Rising, Sapphire, were Cursed Hollow and Dragonshire, and the Baddest Dudes banned Altrack Pass and Garden of Terror, Sapphire taking us to Towers of Doom. I want to welcome everybody to my stream tonight. I'm your host, Sparhawk. I'll show you my ugly mug in a moment. It's just to pre-warn you in case you choose to uh, want to close the page for a minute. Um, we'll be doing that during the draft. I'm really looking forward to this, so I will let them know that I am ready and we can hop right into it. And as always, um, when we get into game, if volume levels are too high on one side or too low, please let me know. Uh, you're more than welcome to participate in conversation. So let me let them know that they are ready. Just letting them know, wishing them good luck. All right, we're just waiting for them to kick in and we will get into the draft. All right, like I said, for those who don't know, here's my ugly face. Um, I want to welcome you all to the stream. I hope you like my new uh, starting soon stream and I found some uh, DMCA uh, Twitch music, right? So, you know, trying to bring it up a little bit. Hope I didn't strobe anybody out. And my apologies for not casting many games. Just some... Uh, Things have been going on, so I haven't been able to pick them up. However, I'm trying to make sure I can get back into it and keep the content out and fluid. Fluid? Flowing? Flowing, that's my word. I try with mumbles today. So again, I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in and really looking forward to the smash tonight. So far, we have a Malfurion and a Diablo ban respectively, followed by Falstead. Exorosis, thank you for the follow. Hope I pronounced that right. I'm really well known for name slandering. Really appreciate it. All right, so we have second ban coming out for Phoenix Rising Sapphire. And it is Sonya. That's a that's just an overall good ban. However, they do let the Chromie through. I mean, Sonya's super strong. Chromie's pretty strong on this map as well with her delay. Let's see what Baddest Dudes wants to pick up as their first pick. It's going to be a DPS. And it is Tassadar for first pick. Wow, he's got a lot of stall as well. Just surprised they wouldn't want to bring him. And we have Cassia and Deckard picked up. And I know little Barista, she's on my team. And she's really strong with her Deckard play. Hey, Drapes. Good luck tonight. So we have a 2-3 of Leo and Brightwing. So they have their offlaner. They have good mage power and they have a strong healer. So they're going to have good stall um, on objectives if they want it. So we have a Tychus band from Phoenix Rising for their final ban and taking out the Joanna. I mean, she's a really strong tank on this map uh, with her point control and her ability to get in and just disrupt. And it's tough with Joanna to um, 
take a, uh, like a tower back if she's on point blocking. So we have a Li Ming and a Varian. I'm guessing that's probably going to be a Taunt Varian as Meat Drapes has not um, selected. Well, they don't have an offlaner yet, but I know Meat Drapes. And he is usually their offlane player. However, they might try some funky shenanigans. We follow it up with a Garrosh and a Sylvanas. Wow. That's a good... I think by the looks of it, both comps could be good. It looks like they're going to be trying to punish that Varian for when he dives in with a taunt. Really going to leave him vulnerable. So I think uh, the DPS is really going to be need to be on point. Even if it's just trying to take out Garrosh. And their off laner is Malthael. So it'll be Malthael versus Leo. Wow. All right, any comments in draft on who you felt won the draft? Do you give it to the baddest dudes or do you give it to Phoenix Rising? Oh, I would totally agree, uh, Exorosis, that uh, Mal and Drapes is really comfortable. All right, so let's get into the in-game action. We'll go over some teams for everybody. All right, while they're loading in, let's go with Demon Grand on Garrosh, TGX Durlock on Leoric, Peach on Brightwing, Mad Kazer on Sylvanas, Night Raven on Tassadar, and for Phoenix Rising, Sapphire, Little Burst on Deckard, This is Kobe on Varian, Blade Drapes on the Malthael, Stitch on Li Ming, and Rome Romael on Cassia. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. <clears throat> All right, come on, game, load in. Everybody's ready. Really good to be back in the caster seat after a. Uh, uh, I call it a lengthy time away from everybody. Prepare you missed everybody. Battle, heroes. All right, let's bring up some talents for everyone to look at. <clears throat> Both teams getting ready to roar out of the gates. I have the battle begins in <clears throat> I have to agree with you, X. Right? And I totally agree with your comment. Five, right? four, three, two, one. Let the battle begin. I mean, it's all up to execution. I think they're going to have strong push, but if Sylvanas overextends once Varian has taunt, I mean, she'll die pretty easy. Uh, nothing unusual, really out of the level one pick. Oh, Mel. Oh, first blood going over to the baddest dudes with a kill. Sylvanas gets credit for it. Cassia overextended just a little bit, not knowing the full uh, power of what's coming. Sylvanas is already heading bottom. Looks like they're going to try and interrupt. Try and deny some experience. Kobe is able to pick up some of it, so it's good. Taunt on to Kobe, Polly. Stun goes out, Kobe gets away. Nice play by Kobe. I mean, he got himself into trouble, so that's what Garrosh does, and, but he's able to get himself out of the trouble as well. Now it's just soaking. And if we move up a little bit, <clears throat> it looks like Phoenix Rising Sapphire is jumping on their camp right away. They have Bear and Romeo on it. <clears throat> and as you can see, uh, the baddest dudes are all over theirs as well, both being capped pretty much at the same time. Big toss, big poly, big wall, big stun, and Colby gets away. Followed up with a Li Ming orb to the face. Ether Walker taken by the Li Ming player. I wonder if that's trying to set up a Calamity build. 
Taunt, follow up. Big toss onto Colby. And Colby goes down. The stitch is able to put more damage onto <coughs> the Garrosh player. However, uh, with his armor, he didn't really do a lot of damage. Looks like they're going up for a gank onto Bloody Drapes, but he's able to get away in time as we have our first objective being called. So the experience is pretty close to each other. Looks like they're trying to big toss on the cold. Big taunt, big stun. Can they get the kill? They cannot. The heal self heal is too much for Kobe at this level. They trade top. The fight is over mid. Looks like Leo's coming down. Try and give support. And that's going to give Drapes the opportunity to try and double soak. And Phoenix Rising Sapphire, I mean, is able to uh, get those shots. Oh, and I just missed the kill onto Garrosh, so I'm assuming the combo worked by the looks of it. Cassia picking up the kill. Oh, it looks like we're getting an orb build, Li Ming. I like that. That actually counters... Uh, the range that they have on the baddest dudes. So I have, I have a lot of respect for that, actually. They're, I mean, picking up Z's vengeance, right? Uh, keeps Lee Ming in a safe position, as well as uh, if it hits somebody, it, it's it's going to hurt. Not to mention, it should be tossing more than just, it'll be back to back. I don't mind that pickup at all. Eight do come online for the baddest dudes first. Just behind, like not even a fraction of an experience point though. Coley gets trapped out again, gets Polly. They put the damage onto him. Coley wisely backing off. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the Gobble Soakers. They are trying to engage. Let's see what the play is for this next set of objectives that are going to be in the top left and top right corner. And again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in for this rather exciting match so far between uh, Battle Students and Phoenix Rising Sapphire. Both teams trying to rise a bit further in... Ooh, and Kill goes on to Malthael. They're trying to engage on this. They get a taunt. Polly goes out. They may need to give this up. Cassie in a bad spot. Yeah, down that mouth ale. I mean, probably could have, they, they could have afforded to give this one up without taking the death after the game. However, no kills of 4 to 1 now. And Demon is looking for Stitch. Right away, though, the four man hops back to the bottom. And they are going for the gang. They get a taunt to try and avoid. There's a toss. There's a poly. There's a level 10. And Kobe gets away unscathed. Good play by him. 10s now come online. Let's quickly run down while they're doing the soak. We have Warlord Challenge, Entomb, Blink Heal, Wailing Arrow, and Black Hole. For the Baddest Dudes and for Phoenix Rising Sapphire, we have Shield Wall, Disintegrate, Last Rites, Ball Lightning, and Stay a While and Listen. Nice poke by Rommel. Malthale looking to try and get, not get ganked again. There's the toss. There's the wall, there's the poly. 
And again, the four man secures. And they're trying, and meanwhile, the sacrifice is to get some bottom pressure. They need to get out now. Taunt. Wailing arrow does go out. Oh, nice. Stay a while. Oh, quick counter. Oh, Rommel's got to get out of there. Disintegrate goes out, though. That's going to create some separation and buy the team. Wow. Good fight. Taunt wasn't up. Malfail coming down to try and interrupt. Kobe being chased. Everybody's focusing on the drapes. There's Taunt. But they do get Garrosh. And Drapes doesn't go down. So well played by Phoenix Rising to keep him alive. That's a lot of work. And they are going to give up the channel. Both teams are now tied at 28 points. And Phoenix Rising is hopping onto their siege camp. Uh, are they trying for the invade? Nope, they decided not to. I like the idea of what they tried to do though. I mean, now they have three people over there. Demon Grand hiding in the bush, so is Kobe. And the offlaner is still dueling it out. 13 comes online, just slightly before, by the baddest dudes. They do get the get the toss. Orb misses. Disintegrate goes out. Taunt goes out. Oh, another orb could have definitely caused some big damage. These teams have come out swinging. They are holding nothing, which I respect a lot. <coughs> Oh, sorry. I totally agree with Yax. Totally agree. They were able to stop the camp before they could do any more damage. I mean, bottom lane still looks pretty solid for both teams. It's only one tower down for the baddest dudes. Oh, let's go up here, see what's happening. Rapes is going to try and get out of there. He's going to be caught with an entomb and he's going to die. Must have forgot about that Brightwing on the opposing team. Oh, Taunt under tower goes out. Oh, blow up onto Garrosh. So one for one trade. I can really respect that. Little Barista channels bottom. They are fighting for top. Or mid, I guess I should say. Looks like Bear's trying to channel for both. They get the stall. Leo's running away. Five seconds to taunt. Leo goes down. Cass trying to stall again. Malhael's back in the fight. Garrosh is on his way. And they get both. Well played by Phoenix Rising Sapphire. And wow, we do have a glass cannon. Is that all? Mortal Strike. So I really like that actually. Uh, that can help a lot. And they were able to get the wall down in the process. Putting some damage out. To four versus five, so they need to be careful. We're almost caught again. Cassia goes down. <clears throat> However, they did manage to get that entire, most of the three quarters of that wall, just like a quarter health left on the last section of wall. And with that kill, they are going to look and try and look for a steal here. Try and counter out that pressure. Everybody's getting back onto it. The steal happens. Big taunt. Gets one big throw. There's the taunt. Stay a while goes out. What a beautiful one that was. They gave up some sappers, but they held that 
defense against the five man really well. So again, now we have the triple ultra phase spawning. Both teams at 16. Do get ready. So then that was a pretty smart call to cap theirs uh, for the Nevada students to cap their sappers. And now it's going to kind of force them to. Yeah, it was a very huge sleep. I totally agree. Colby caught. Garrosh goes down. Stitches, orbs, and missiles get eaten by minions, but I guess they're not arguing with that. And another double channel. This is starting to get into the risk factor, but the best well, my greatest enjoyment of playing Towers of Doom is there's always comeback potential. Rumble, you should be able to kill him. Oh, now you gotta get away. Great wing showed up. And big in tune. Sitch takes some damage from Tassadar. And Drapes, no fear, is still up there just clearing waves. Trying to give him an experience lead. The kills are getting slightly closer at 7 to 6. And they are starting to try and put some tower pressure on. Big taunt. Oh, another blow up onto Garrosh, followed by Varian. With the black hole by the pass. Brightwing goes down. Whoops, sorry. All right, and with that stitch poke. Oh, and he went near ball. Surprising he didn't complete the uh, trifecta of orb build, surprisingly. So they, it is a four versus three for contention right here for this next objective. Phoenix Rising has Bear and Romanel on or Romel? Yeah, Romel, I think it is. And they are waiting. They have their Garrosh, so he will be he swift heroes. back. Brightwing Do is back, so she can phase shift in. This is one channel. Are they going to give it up? They do get one stall. Big stay a while. Taunt. Oh, big orb with ball lightning doing massive work. Cassie goes down by Sylvanas. Oh, Kobe looks like it's next. So that's three members for one for the side of the baddest dudes. However, with Drapes not coming to the fight and um, double soaking his mouth out, He's keeping the team in it with experience. Right. Some potions sitting there for the next. In 20 seconds now. So this could be a the good opportunity for the baddest dudes to try and push into um, this bottom fort. All right, the team is coming back. I mean, I think the worst able to lose out of this is the wall. All right, and we have level 20s for both teams. Boss was captured by the baddest dudes. Oh, I 100% agree with you. And I think they are going to take this. Phoenix Rising is taking this bottom fort. Now, can they get out with it will be the right team. On. Garrosh goes down. Black hole from behind. Hits nothing. Romo caught out, but is staying alive. Wailing Arrow goes on to him. They get Tassadar by Malthael. Now it's Leo. Man, this is a great time for them to uh, just. They have 
like 40 seconds they could capture and take mid keep or mid fort I mean create more pressure so now that drops them to seven with a lot of time Kobe and Stitch just floating back right trying to keep this fort in their favor nine seconds till Garrosh is back how are they doing on this camp? They didn't manage to cap it. So they can bring Leo down. Tass won't be back in time, I think. No, he might be back. Big taunt on the call. There's the poly, there's the stun. Followed by the Gearosh taunt. Stay at mass and stay a while. Garrosh back in the graveyard. Leark right behind him. Actually, if they hold those this camp right here, it's just going to turn his back right away. There they go. Good damage. So, alright, since we have a break in the action, 20s are Titanic Might. Oops. Hold on. So we're doing a, a fight here. I'm surprised Drapes didn't want to try and finish off this top uh, fort. However, they do have catapult pressure and they can totally pick on quick unstoppable wall. And back under Phoenix Rising Sapphire's control, the bottom fort is Polly. So this will be five shots, setting them at two. I mean, like I said, if I was Phoenix Rising, I would set Malthay on top, clear that lane, take that top fort down, put that under your control as well. Big black hole comes out, doesn't hit anybody. Oh, oh. Cassie and Malthy will get ripped apart. Ugh. Garrosh takes an orb to the face. So that was two to one. Kills are, this game is so close. It's going in, in either team's favor. Kobe trapped. Throws his protect out. Unfortunately cannot survive with a four-man push onto his corpse. Engagement over the Sapper camp. I just think Drape should go and take that top fort. I just I mean he can knock it down in a matter of seconds. So they're setting up something, however they have to be careful. They're going to try and run a three-man defense. With four on the other side, Garrosh is now online. Cassius coming to join the fray. Black Hole goes out, that seems to whiff. Oh, silence for the Entomb on the mouth. They'll stay while Mrs. Oh, barely gets Sabanus. And it looks like this is going to be a troll. Big orbs go out though. But they are body blocking. They get Roma Crops again. They do get the channel. Garrosh and Leo go down. Cassie goes down. Ball Lightning doing work in the back line. So two for two. And with no tank available, it looks like Phoenix Rising is going on boss. Here is the last hurrah. Tassadar finishes his quest. Sylvanas goes down, Tassadar goes down, and I believe this is going to be GG for Phoenix Rising. Sapphire, well played. Kills 19 to 16. I mean, really well played. 
I would agree with you, X. Right? <clears throat> really well played for Phoenix Rising. Uh, let me update. Let's look at the numbers here. Sylvanas is 68,000. Tassadar at 68,000. Li Ming at 97. Cassie at 72. And they all balance each other out. Um. I really like the zero deaths, especially with the glass cannon. So I think I have, I'm going to give my, I think I have to give my MVP to Brightwing for the baddest dudes. And it's too many to pick. I love to give it for, I think I have to give it for Barista because her setups with the stay a while were on point. Let me quickly update, take us to the, map screen oh Romeo thank you for the tank I mean thank you for the follow <laughs> <clears throat> I totally agree I like to give an MVP to both teams but like I said in the end I had to go with the Decker he was Brista is just so known for her decker, and I would totally expect to see it banned out. Now that they've seen it. Sorry, just talking to the captains. It looks like the baddest dudes have taken um, <clears throat> first pick. So Phoenix Rising is going to be choosing the map. I'm just waiting to see which one it is. And then we will update and get into it. <laughs> Good game. Good game, Phoenix Rising Sapphire. It was really well played. I'm taking nothing away from the baddest dudes. That was such a close match. Uh, back and forth. Alright. So, let me m update our map. So, we are going to Volskaya Foundry. Alright, so they're just trying to set up the lobby, and then we'll get going. Alright, whoops, that was not what I wanted. Alright, so since we're here, and we have a minute, one of the players had to go AFK. I'm just going to throw a East uh, Phoenix Rising uh, quick ad, and I'll be right back. And it looks like they called a short break. <clears throat> hey, as a tank player throughout a lot of years of my gaming history, um, all I say is tanks, comma, you're welcome.
All right, everybody, it looks like we are getting ready to go. Let's let them know that I'm ready. All right. All right, so everybody's readying up. So we'll get right back into this. Looks like we are getting ready to go. So we'll get right into the draft. Here we go. Like I said, we are going to Volskaya Foundry, picked by Phoenix Rising Sapphire, who are currently up one game to zero against the Baddest Dudes. Mad respect for the last game. I thought it was played really well by Phoenix Rising. Uh, like everything was close. You know, top DPS on both sides had top damage. I mean, everybody played. It was a really well played game. And it came down to the wire. All right, so let's get into the draft. <clears throat> and I really want to thank everybody for staying tuned and um, joining me in watching. Uh, this exciting game going on tonight in Division E. I mean, Phoenix Sapphire definitely pushing for the W, so I know taking that one game is a small success for them. Um, but I, I do believe they'd love to win it. And, of course, the, ba the Baddest Dudes, they want to keep their um, high uh, placement in Division E for the Nexus Gaming Series, where it is, if not Rise. So we have the Malfurion and the Falstead by the Baddest Dudes for the first two bands. And we have Sonya and Diablo for the bands for Phoenix Rising Sapphire. And I want to thank those that did follow so far. And if anybody is new, please, you're more than welcome to uh, leave a follow. Not necessary. 
And first pick is Cassia. So taking that away from Romel. Saying no more Cassia shenanigans. So I'm really looking to see what Phoenix Rising, as they're the ones who chose the map, you know, decide to bring. I know the baddest dudes are going to be a little bit upset at that first game loss, so they'll be coming out swinging. Chromie and Rexar. I like it. Rexar gives a lot of presence in the off lane. Um... Double soaking, not the greatest, uh, but you don't really need to double soak on this map. I mean, you can use the uh, treadmills or escalator, not an escalator. Oh, nope, oh, somebody crashed. One second. Let's just go back to this. One second, I just have to tell them. Alright, and we are getting back into the map, so let's get back into the draft. There was a misclick on one of the selections. Hey Artemis, how you doing? Hope you're doing well tonight, my friend. Yes, I definitely wish the baddest dudes the best of luck. I mean, they fell in the first game, but I really want this to go to uh, three games. Just because I enjoy the heck out of casting and uh, these are two good both teams I know and both teams I respect I know most of the players on both sides all right so this is one of the games that I really wanted to cast my next cast if I don't pick anything up over the weekend um, is going to be on Tuesday I am casting Phoenix Rising Sapphire versus the Ice Crown Citadel one of their teams I'm not sure if it's the Knights or the Queens So again, quickly, same bands. Um, both teams that uh, agreed that one person was drafted wrong. It was a misclick. So, and I'm guessing that's probably the Rex are. Because <clears throat> I, I know Kobe. And... All right, that makes more sense. The Deckard and the Chromie, since they're letting it through. Like I say, you know, knowing most of the baddest dudes and their organization, they're not going to take that one game um, sitting lightly on their chest. So they'll be coming back to win with a vengeance, so to speak. All right, so the Rexar goes over to the other team with the baddest dudes, as well as Lucio. Lucio, a really good healer for this map, really mobile.
All right. Time winding down for the final band. And that will be a Jaina band. So trying to wait, take away any area damage on the point. I can respect that. It does leave Li Ming open to the baddest dudes if they want her. Or they may want to go uh, uh, Tassadar again. So Joanna is the final ban for the baddest dudes. So we're getting into the 3-4. And we have May and Leo. I love May. She's probably one of my funnest tanks that I enjoy playing. All right, we're down to 4-5 for the Battle Studs with five seconds remaining, so I'm sure we'll be seeing that right away. So we do get the Tassadar again, and the Stitches by Demon. Mad respect. So they didn't work, they really, oh, and Deathwing brought out by Stitch. Woot, woot. Deathwing's so much fun, and he's, he, he's really gained popularity over uh, the next mania that was brought on by presented by CCS Esports um, about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, just before the season. All right, let us get us into the game. Yeah, May is so fun. Like she's in, she's a she's a good tank. If you can counter her, you can counter her. If you're not a hundred percent sure how to counter her. I mean, or if you don't play her smartly, I mean, but uh, I really like me. I, so I have to ask, which comp actually has, let me load it, let me call the teams. We have Demon Grand on Stitches, Durlock on Rexar, Peach on Lucio, Mad Kaiser on Cassia, Night Raven on Tassadar, and using the caster sheet, we have Stitch on Leoric. This is Colby playing May, Chromie. By Manuel or Romanuel or Romo, Romo, Deckard by Little Brista and Bloody Drapes, with the Deathwing, trying to take a page out of my chapter or a chapter out of my page. Yeah, my apologies. All right, let's go to some level one talents as we're getting into the game. Molten Blood. Five, four, three, Scroll of Identify. Two, Time Walker's Pursuit. Ocean's Renewal and Heat Transfer. And for the baddest dudes, we have Patchwork Creation, Bird of Prey, Cell Rando, Thunderstroke, and Static Charge again. A little Brista just laying a wave of potions. They do get their wave sooner, and they're not missing any experience. So right now they're keeping Stitch in the four lane. And, um, right in the four man with them. Sorry, my apologies. Oh, tried the hook, get some minion. Down below, Drapes, doing pretty good. Gonna have to be careful to try and get in there and get those globes though. For him, the secret will be regen globes. Both teams on their camp right away. And let's get them into map for both of you. Alright. So we have a four man for the baddest dudes versus a two man. Mm. The two man takes it first. Gives a good opportunity for to try and get an experienced lead. back to the four man looks like they are take uh, Phoenix Rising's taking their airplane camps right away that's what they're trying for that's what they were trying to sneak in on them 
but it gets spotted out by Phoenix Rising. And poking away. Kobe sneaking down to get mid soap. away first objective has been announced and they are going to have some pressure put on them on their wall at least and they are stopping them from trying to rotate up offensively so they will have to rotate defensively to take care of that mess and that's going to give them an opportunity to take the healing beacon oh we have a pause in the game give me one second Let's leave that here. All right. Trying to see. I'm guessing lag on someone's part. Oh, it looked like one of the healers has disconnected. So while we're getting them back, I'll just play some music for y'all. And we are going to be getting back right into the game. So let me make sure that we are in game. There we go. Quick change. And again, when we left off, uh, airplane camp doing work in the top. Phoenix Rising has the healing beacon. Picked up by a little barista. They did get some work with their airplane camp. I have to give them credit. And it looks like baddest dudes are trying to start a uh, channel. Deathwing is doing a good job holding his own against Rektar. They are trying to bully them off though. Rexar comes up. Healing beacons dropped. The Deafen's coming up for the fight. I really want to see what death he took Skyfall. And Infernus. Not a hundred percent if I like, um, as a Deathwing player, you know, I, I don't know if Skyfall is the right call. He could have went Hellstorm, I feel, and then landed on the point, and it would have given his cooldown you know, such an advantage. 85 percent. Breath weapon missed. Stitch backing away. Turret has been dropped. Phoenix Rising starting a channel of their own now. Hook misses. Wrath Weapon goes out. Rexar does go down. Cataclysm is being thrown here straight across.
Oh, he can get his breath weapon off. <clears throat> and they do get Lucio. Lucio goes down. They kill the turret. 15 seconds without their healer. This can give them the opportunity to secure this objective. Barista doing her thing, just dropping potions. Or Deckard. Stitch trying to get Wooly. Both teams have reached. Oh, Chromie gets caught out. Big stun, big breath. Stitch being chased. Oh, Drapes in a bad position and you ro rotating him. Well, I like to say the wrong way. However, uh, Phoenix Rising are going to hit their tens. And they do give up first protector though. So far, only because we have uh, Stitches and Cassia in the protector. So back down to the bottom lane. And tens are online. Let's go up here. I'll go over tens for uh, Phoenix Rising since they have theirs. We have Ice Wall, the May, Tomb, Slowing Sands, Stay a While and Listen. Chromie in a bad spot gets healed. And Bellowing Roar for the Deathwing. And on the other side, don't have anything chosen yet for Demon. However, that's probably because he's piloting. Ice Wall misses, but gives him some block. We have Unleash the Boars, Sound Barrier, Valkyrie, and Black Hole again. And we have the Putrid Vile. I mean, taking the first one, they did get the objective that they wanted, which is you want to try and shoot for that first um, healing recipient cup. Oh, good in tune. This is their follow up. Oh, Black Hole sends him away. Stitch in the world of hurt right now. It's big stay a while and listen. Boars go out. Little Barista gets caught. Jacket's going down. And Drapes picks up the cannon for their team. So they will get the healing beacon. However, to do that, they brought Rexar up to the mid. That's giving free reign to Deathwing to push in the bottom. Everybody up on both sides. Deathwing doing a little bit of damage. Onto that bottom uh, fort wall. Again, Barista and uh, Chromie this time are going to take the airplane camp. Leo's just going to push top. And they have a lot of work done top with their last airplane camp. And they are going to deny them a few globes. Although the kills are in favor and the first protector went over to the baddest, I, I really think the early game up to this point, um, I think I have to give it to the Phoenix Rising Sapphire. Just for how they're pressing. Oh, they, they get Kaiser trapped. Soundberry does come out and save. Ice Wall traps people. Boars come out. Also get Brista goes down. Chromie goes down. Valkyrie goes out. Catch a stitch. He goes down. Kobe's running now. Oh, big 13 hook. That's a four man white. For the five man team. So they will take top four, just as I was saying. How strong top four. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. <clears throat> so they did take top four. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, a bit of a cough. 
Second objective is being called. And the baddest dudes now have a two-man advantage with a four-man kill. Access terminal online. Secure it to activate the protector. Hey, Stark. Stitch trying to push the puppy dog back a little, or the bear, I guess. And they are at 40 odd percent. Deathwing is in the air. It looks like they're going to try and engage before. Oh, rip on to Coley. Blocks away. Pops unstoppable. Drake gets trapped in the entomb. Throws his gear. Ice wall right onto the Tassadar. Boars. Chromie being hit by two in the back lane. Deckard with the kill <laughs> on the Tassadar. Stitch in a little bit of trouble. Does manage to avoid it. All right, so a two-man kill. What a close game. Right away, they're going on healing Beacon. Beacon Deckard. To cover. To get the channel going. Channel is at 99% for the baddest dudes. So it looks like they are taking their machine gun camp. And then going to re-engage. So they are working their way up top now. Min is being cleared. <clears throat> Both teams at 16. 6 to 3 in kills, and here they come. Drapes takes a little bit of damage. Not lots. Healing Beacon gets dropped. I think I have to call that a whip. Drapes in a world of hurt. Pops is fear. Is it going to be enough? Big stay a while. And they do get it, but can they do anything with it? Tassadar goes down. Hook misses. He's still trying to sneak away. Kobe trying to escape. Stitch caught out. Valk is going to go up and catch Leo. Death is going to land. And Mate and Deathwing just pop in it to take it. 65% and they are being chased by the team so Battistudes pulls off two for one and I think it's wise they are trying to back out Deafing is in a pretty auspicious place right now able to send boars go out hitting Kobe nothing to do with Drapes. Big hook misses. And right away the team is on their airplane camp again. Tal? Sure. My apologies. Sorry Artemis. <clears throat> and it looks like baddest dudes are taking theirs. That yeah, was my apology. I for I just totally forgot I closed it at t for the tens. Normally I just leave it open, so I will call that my bad. Caster blame. Hook onto Chromie. Rommel is dead. They have to watch for. I mean, the pull combo. If it hits the target. I think, and they are setting up a uh, five versus three. This is not going to be good. Kobe's running. Stitch is trying to get away. Little Barista under a little bit of trouble. Gets a stun out. Drops the turret. Barista goes down. Leo runs. Kobe gets caught. So they do secure uh, 
one and then two kills, so in total three. In the meantime, Deathwing is pushing bottom. So I'm sure they're going to be rotating to try and keep up with that anyway. Oh, it's, yeah, like I said, I, my bad for not bringing it up. I should have brought it up after the pause, so. Alright, so the healing beacon is picked up on the side of the baddest dudes. Drapes is in a precarious position here. And they did spot him out. I think he's going... And with no cataclysm, he might be in a world of trouble. Dropped his fear. Didn't drop his healing beacon. That's two items that were given. I think that was a bad call by uh, Deathwing to go in there. Either he wasn't sure where they were or he, he had thought they were top. But this is 40 plus seconds without. So this is going to give the five man free roam in the bottom. 20s do come online for the baddest dude first. Kobe tried to go from behind. Realizes he was in a bad spot. Smart call. To the yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it was, what, level 15? 14, maybe? That time of phase when the baddest dude just went 5-man and their 5-man has just been bullying the opposition's 4-man. Two healing beacons and two turrets for the baddest dudes who are now on point. Deathwing is up. And in, probably in the air, because I don't see his icon. All five are bottom. So I think picking up this airplane camp can help them. 20s are online for both teams. I do like the arrival of a god pickup. Opening up those talents. Kobe. Oh, nice check. They get a stun. Pop the stoppable. Future Vile is launched. Deathwing just lands on the party. Big stun. Big sound barrier. Silence. Cast Star goes down. Chrome goes down. They do create overtime though. May goes down. Looks like this is going to be the final fight. Oh. Big stun. Big stay a while. Drapes is about to go down. To get a stun on Leo. Or onto his Wraith. And they did get top port with airplane, however, with a five-man wipe, only Chrome is going to be up in a few seconds. I'll call it a possibility of GG, but I don't think it's going to be. Before I stay focused on there, Airplane Camp is healthy in the top lane. They are putting work onto the keep. I do think they're going to have mostly everybody up for the fence though, so that we shall see. 17 kills to 6 in favor of the baddest dudes this game. Red Hand to Death from the core going out, doing damage. Dan State core damage being on 80%, 65%, 60% health. Leo goes 40%, 35, 32, 10, and 0. And that is a GG for the baddest dudes. Good game. Well played. Alright, let's look at some numbers. I already think I have my VPs in position this time. Let's see, we have Cassia, 68 tasks, 51. 57,000 by Deathwing, 102 siege. Well done on uh, the Deathwing. Uh, healing numbers, we have 81,000 for Lucio, 54 for a Little Bear. Um, and I, I, I do think, and you guys are more than welcome to disagree with me, but I'm going to give my MVP for the baddest dudes over to Lucio. His uh, sound beats were 
on point to keep his team alive, especially with the breath weapon by Deathwing. And for uh, Phoenix Rising, I, I think I have to give it to the Deathwing player. I think that was really, he played it really well, uh, made a couple of mistakes. Um, I can give it to Kobe though. I mean, I, I really liked how he played his mace. He missed with his ice wall, so. Um, no, I'll have to go back and give it to Bear. I think that her Deckard is just so on point. All right, so let us go, let me update our scorecard. And as we were hoping, we will be going to a game three. So let's just do a quick add and then we'll get to the scoreboard. map scores we are sitting at one game to one apiece let's play some background music for everybody while we wait for the next lobby draft Alright, let me update the map for everybody. And as you can see, we are going to be going to Infernal Shrines, picked by Phoenix Rising Sapphire, with the game on the line, going to everybody's favorite map, Phoenix Rise, uh, sorry, Infernal Shrines. Hey Johnny, nice to see you my friend. Get into the draft again. You know, welcome to the stream, Johnny. Haven't seen you for a while. Hope you're doing well. So this is it. This is the game three for the Baddest Dudes versus Phoenix Rising Sapphire for NGS Season Eleven Division E East. And again, uh, the Baddest Dudes just not letting that Malfurion through. They just don't want to deal with it. And we follow it up with a Sonya ban. So just not giving that Sonya away. Sonya really strong on this map. And they did ban the Deckard. So th there's the respect ban onto Little Barista. I think she earned it. She definitely threw a, a crutch the first two games with her Deckard play. I feel I can say with uh, um, good tidings that, you know, Barista, Little Barista's, I, I, 
it is really overall, I think, one of the best healers that I've seen. Um, I know she played in a girls' gang squad tournament a few months ago, and they they ended up taking second place. Um, so, I mean, and we have her on Phoenix Rising Amethyst, and she's an asset to the team, that's for sure. <clears throat> However, you know, into the draft, we have the Tassadar first pickup. So all three games, Tassadar are being picked. We have Varian Stukov, followed by Cassia and Peach back on the Lucio. I mean, if it's not broke, it won you a game. So they could literally draft the same comp and hope for, uh, you know, probably hope for the same results. And again, just to throw it out there, if there is anybody new to the stream, uh, please go ahead and leave a follow. I really appreciate it. I know I took a break to deal with some personal stuff. Um, I am going to try and be back and back to my minimum of casting. Uh, my next cast, if I don't do a game on the weekend, will probably be Tuesday with uh, Phoenix Rising Sapphire versus the Ice Crown Citadel organization. Yes. So I will pre-wish them good luck. So we get a Malthael ban and a Gazlo ban. Li Ming is coming in. Hey, Peach, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. Now, as a Lucio player, I really liked your Lucio last game. I'm going to shout that out to you. I thought your beats were really on point, so keep at it. So we have a Diva and a Li Ming. So the 4-5 for the baddest dudes going into game 3 is going to be May and Urel. Lot Shrine Clear. Task could get mad value, depending on what he goes as a build. And we have a Tyrael coming out. I think that's the first Tyrael game I have casted um, this season, actually. I could be wrong, but I, I mean, I've cast quite a few games. So let us get into the game. Uh, like I said, you still had my MVP. All right, so going into the final map of the evening, we have Demon Grand on May, Durlock on Urel, Peach on her semi-infamous Lucio, Mad Kaiser on Cassia, Night Raven back on Tassadar, and for Phoenix Rising Sapphire, we have Little Bursta on the Stukov, Stitch on the Varian, Buddy Drapes on the Diva, Romo on Li Ming, and this is Kobe playing the Tyrael. All right. This is going to be a good finish. Let's zoom out. Let's bring up Talons. I'll leave Talons up for this game. I have to agree, Artemis. I, I, I do like... I think execution relies... And you can disagree with me. But I think execution relies more on Phoenix Rising Sapphire. With the Varian, uh, Tyrio, um, Stukov combo. And the Ming follow up. And, uh, but, and I think, I mean, I love the draft and out of the box thought that Phoenix Rising put into their draft. But uh, quite a standard draft for the baddest dudes. You know, all heroes are proven to be useful. So I can't take anything from them. I mean, this is going to be an exciting game. All right, so while they're doing that, I am going to quickly bring up a poll, and let's see what everybody thinks.
Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All right. All right, let's just get this out there. Sorry about that. Stitch putting some work down to the bottom with Peach and Cassia taking out this camp for the side of the baddest dudes. Yeah, that's what I hear, Johnny. So I have to agree with him, man. Said, I don't know who I can give the edge to. As a caster, I'm just neutrally biased. Um, you know, I really like Colby putting material into his arsenal. Denying some experience from the two men. So the three versus two pushes off. First shrine is called. Level five does come online. That's just a matter of minion clear up, I believe. I really like looking forward to seeing what the material can do. I know he's been changed. I'm not 100% sure to what level he's been changed, but I know they did do some work on him. I'm just not a Tyrael player, so... I mean, people who are Tyrael players are more than welcome to uh, share your thoughts on him. And if you feel he'd be useful in this. Shrine has spawned. Colby Drapes are there. Drapes doesn't have Mech Explosion yet. Oh, and it's a Colossal Smash variant. Both E taking a bit of damage. Good wall, trapping three. Mech Diva Explosion is going to go out. Material goes down. Reduces the cooldown. Mech Explosion goes out. 19 to 21. Drake trying to run away. I'm surprised we didn't get cool moves out of the D.Va for the stuns and the health. So it's an Arcane Punisher going over to the Baddest Dudes. Be pushing down mid lane. Stitch in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, John Cena stunned for the kill. Oh, at least he gets the assist. We have a four man pushing the mid lane. We'll be in a little bit of trouble. Another stun onto the back lane or back line. Nice little boot by Lucio. They do clear it up, however. So the next one will be camps. Looks like the baddest dudes are on their Kazra camp right away. From Siege camp, I mean. Unfortunately, I'm going to agree with you, X. I was expecting Taunt when I saw the Lion's Maw. I mean, however, uh, I mean, it could work. We shall have to see. But I just think the uh, Taunt Baron would give more lockdown pressure. 
onto a hero for the Li Ming uh, blow ups. So mid camp, doing some work. Bottom camp, taken by the baddest dudes, doing some work as well now. Oh, looks like we have a potential jump onto Stitch. Oh, trapped by a wall. Blinded by me. And I do think that the Ming should be trying to focus her damage to the heroes when they're in a fight. See what's going on up top. Just trading back and forth. Looks like there's a call for the Shaman camp by Phoenix Rising. The Stitch is getting soaked bottom. Okay, now the 10s are online and we have a bit of a lull. Uh, let me go over the level 10 talents. We have Ice Wall for May. Uh, Ardent Defender by Ural. Sound Barrier again. Valkyrie again. Black Hole again. And on the side of Phoenix Rising, we have Shield Wall, Micro Missiles, Wave of Force, no Disintegrate this time, Judgment, and Swaling, Flappy Slap. Or Slap. So all around, nothing strange out of the level 10 picks. Second objective is called. Bastards are up two kills to zero in this final game of the best of three. Yeah, that's why I'm not a super fan, and I hate to share it, but I'm not a fan of Li Ming as much on this map as other mages. For this reason alone. Right, Ice Wall goes out, does some blocking. Wave Force goes out, short cooldown, almost a fourth ability. Big Judgment, big going in. Minion blocks, they still get the Tassadar. But one minion took care of uh, Rommel's combination. 13 to 12. Now is the time. They do have a 5 man. Smelly Hand comes out. We'll be in a little bit of trouble. 19 to 17. 3 seconds before Cassidy is up. 28. 27. 29. And a Frozen Punisher taken by Phoenix Rising Sapphire. So, so far early in this game, um, the Punisher is just literally being traded. Both teams going back to back. I mean, it's so hard to predict the winner in this one. And in fact, I wish it was best of five. I hate to see anybody lose. I've been enjoying myself. With the Frozen, I mean, they are safe to push this work down. Frozen does a lot of work. So are they going... I think they are going for the Camp Steel here. Giving up their advantage with the Punisher. Which I think is a smart call. They should have double Camp Pressure. Let's see if they're going to send... One person? Oh, with vision. They are going to get some damage onto that tower. And they are going to take the bottom camp as well. Create bottom pressure. Both teams hitting 13. 14 is about to come online, giving them a hit point advantage. Pretty much it. Stat advantage. They are able to take it. So a triple capture for the mid bottom by Phoenix Rising. I mean, they're just both teams playing out of their minds right now. It's a very easy, easy game. One more orb will take that fort down, or that tower down. Ice Wall misses, however, they are trying to engage. Kobe gets away safely. Combo misses from Leeming. Oh! Big jump on the Tascar again for the punish. Well, I think we know who they're focusing. 
think I'll have to get credit for the kill, but we'll have to give that a team effort. Let's see what Phoenix Friday even wants to do with this brief advantage they have. They do have four men trying to defend against the two. Bruce is back with the group. As is Kobe. It looks like Li Ming and Stukov are going for their uh, shaman camp again. And in the top lane, Diva's just pushing. It's like, oh, I'll come over and help you a little bit. No real need against uh, Stukov. And probably got the strongest melee attack in the game. However, I mean... Gives them a 16 advantage lead and almost a full level advantage for Phoenix Rising Sapphire. What is the plan? Oh, they got a hook. They got a cut, catch on it. There's a dive in the blow up. They are just picking a task in this game. We do have a full orb build by Li Ming. 24 seconds without task. Looks like they're going for a second fort. With their advantage. Looks like they're focusing on the URL. Icefall catches. Great. Shrine is active. I think the Badistus played that really wisely. They kept them busy until Tassadar came back, allowing them to be a five man with their 16 siblings. However, all talents are up on the side except for Judgment. 10 seconds on that. They are 19 to 1. And this looks like a Mortar Punisher to me. 23 to 2. 26. Drapes caught. Diva Mech goes down. Twenty-nine to seventeen. Looks like they are going to sippy and then re-engage. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-eight. And they could not prevent it. Kobe goes in. This could, this might be a bad engage. Oh, good wave of force by Ming. Varian trying to run, caught. Stitch out of position gets caught. Ice wall onto the drapes. The rest seem to be able to get away. This border punisher is just. Laying out mortars. Jumps just in time, I think. So they are getting double attack pressure on it. Rapes is gonna lose his mech again. Fifty percent. Stun on the Kobe. And they are focusing that heat. And that's where it will end. This will give them triple pressure. I think triple camps. You know, it looks like they're not. They are going to be taking the bottom camp first. We'll have to see if Phoenix Riding wants to take theirs. Oops, let's pop down here. They're just putting work onto the wall while they take the camp. So the bottom siege camp has been picked up. It looks like Phoenix Rising might be looking at an engage. Kobe is trapped. Camp's caught. Orbs miss. Oh, that time it did miss. Stitch trying to take care of this bottom camp. Siege camp still up on the side of Phoenix Rising. And here 
here comes the crash. Also, smash goes out. Down there, it goes out. Kobe in a world of hurt. Stitch gets caught. Trapped. So we lose Varian and Tyrael. So they still get their three camp capture. Just took them a second longer to do it. Ties them up in experience with the combat mechanics of Heroes of the Stone that we all love and appreciate. And does give them a slight advantage for getting into their 20s. And they are invading onto the uh, Shaman camp. And for those of you who like the interviews, I am doing a winner's interview after the match. So it's unfortunate with this best of three that one team has to lose. Um, I think this has been a really good series. And the game is still so close. And 20s for, will come online for the baddest dudes, however, first. We have a shrine coming up. Witch Doctor Camp is taken care of. So the biggest fight is going to be over this objective. 20s are online for the baddest students. Phoenix Rising trying to get their way to 20. I don't know. I mean, they could have to give up this Punisher, they just have to not die in this cause. Stitch is blocked up by a wall. Twenties are going to be online for Phoenix Rising. He's playing his safe at the moment. Drape's taking some damage. Colossus Smash, no judgment was out. Material goes down. Oh, and Durlock gets away with a smidgen of health. Drake's gonna get popped out of mech. We're trying to save, but can't. Stitch in a world of hurt as well. Three man kill. Or three person. Kill, and that's a full kill onto the Diva. And they do have three catapults hitting core. Someone needs to respond to that. And with a frozen Punisher, I mean, they can hold off a little bit of core damage, but I think by the time that Punisher gets there, they will have most of their shield back. Li Ming trying to just poke out there, do some damage. Needs to be careful or quick with the teleport. Instead of trying to pull it in, no, they don't want to, they want to take as much wall damage as they could. Cena jumps. Kobe gets caught. Big three man ice wall by Demon. Stukov goes down. Kirill's about to die. Colossal Smash goes out. Soundberry goes out. Drake drops. And this looks like there's a jump onto Drake. Gets away. Stitch in a world of trouble. That's three people down. And that is 15 10. That is game. I agree, X. But I like how, I mean, the baddest dudes didn't want to take a chance. So I, I can agree with what they did. Okay, so let's look at some numbers. 103,000 by Lucio. Good job, Peach. 53,000 by the Stukov. With three kills for her team. Way to go, a little barista. Okay, uh, I, I think it's, for me, it's rather simple. I am giving... I think I have to go with the healers 
both healers. You know, Lucio is definitely MVP for the series. And Little Bear uh, did a lot with her Stuka. I mean, she secured three kills to help her team out. Um, so really impressive. Let me update our position and take us to the map and I'll see if we have someone for an interview. All right, so here we go. Let's go to our map screen for everybody. All right. Let me see if I can get a winner's interview. All right, just waiting to see what's going on. Hello. Hello, Demon. I was just saying good games to the people in chat. Sure. So that for your team, I have to say, I mean, that was those were really close matches. Um, they were so fun, though. Like but it was. That's that's the kind of balance that makes the game fun. Like when NGS gets it right, and you have two teams that are like, like you know, really, really equally paired. It, it the games are fun. It's real fun. Oh, it looked like a blast to play. I mean, all three of them could have went either way, yeah, in my opinion. Exactly. Like, it was on your the edge of your seat. You know what I mean? Like, either fight wins this. And that, it was so fun. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, congrats. I got to tip my hat to the opponents because that was, that was exciting. And then, like, my entire team, like, we're all playing um, basically different roles than we normally play, uh, except for Durlock. Okay. Um, so, like, you know, our main healer is on damage we had a sub playing for healer then we had a sub playing who's usually off lane playing damage then me who's damage playing tank like it was it was a wild week today so I'm oh, i can imagine we, we were able to squeeze that out <clears throat> well i have to give kudos to peach um they did an awesome job uh with their lucio plays to help keep your team in it that's for sure oh yeah all right um so Let's see. Let's quickly go over uh, Towers of Doom. Um, uh, was, I mean, it, de it went for the Phoenix Rising. However, it definitely could have went in your guys' favor at all. I mean, as well. Um, what were your thoughts in regards to Game 1 and them able to sneak that from you? Because I know you guys, and I mean, you got your great team, great organization. Um, so were you, were you surprised? that they were able to take that first game from you? I mean, I'm going to say we were surprised in the sense that, you know, you go into every game expecting to win, right? Like, or trying to win at the very least. Right. You know, you have the mentality of, of I want to win. Um, and so, you know, losing the course is a surprise under that mind state. But um, really, no, they played really, really well, and they were very dominant. And um, their, their off-roster sub... Um, who played Deckard that first game did a yes. great job at, at encountering me as Garrosh. So it oh, made it yeah. to where whenever I got a throw, it didn't matter. I got locked down and then and then blown up, and I paid for it. Um, uh, in fact, I, I was just telling my team. I, apparently, I ruined my my KDA for the season because I died ten times in game one. Wow. Yeah, I know. I was uh, so surprised, but I mean, Bear yeah. locked you down hard. Right. Yeah, like, they did a great job. That was that was super impressive. I was I I thought I was gonna have a fun time tossing people around, and then right. the the timing on the root and the you know anti armor and all of that just made it really really hard on me. So I I mean I got to give them props for game one. Well, yeah, I mean I, I was thinking like when I saw the garage, and it's like, okay, I mean, so who's gonna win? Is it gonna be the Varian? Or the garage, right? And that's really right. what it boiled down to. And you were smart. I mean, you you were able to get in there, get Varian or someone taunted, or I mean, or thrown and then taunted. However, uh, Barista with her Decker, she yeah. just seemed to be there to, you know, yeah, you threw my friend. I'm just going to lock you guys down. Yeah, 
And then and then even if I didn't die instantly, there was the follow up sleep that yes. just made it to where my team couldn't do anything to win the fight and I you know, I would just be near dead anyway. So once I fell asleep it was like, Well, all right guys. Yeah. You know, I'll see you well, in twenty seconds when I need to you know. Hundred percent have to agree with you. Okay, let's move on to uh, Volskaya again. Another great game, um, really close. You guys were able to edge it out. Um, did you? Were you not thinking about a Deckard ban for that map? Well, it, we kind of had to choose. We were worried about Falstad, um, okay. and then we kind of realized that the the main talent that makes Falstad so strong right now is, is banned anyways. And so I was like, why am I banning Falstad? You know, like, and, and so that's when we, like, game three, we stopped banning Falstad. But, yeah, like, it, it, it we should have banned Deckard, I think. But um, once I saw their comp and I made that quick decision to switch to Stitches, I think it, it worked out for us anyways. Right. Well, um, yeah, you guys played that map really strong. I mean, once your five man got together... Uh, you can correct me, but I think it was around uh, level between 13 to 15. Because then when you guys grouped up as five, you pushed their four man. You were getting, you got like a four man kill. I mean, mm -hmm. totally taking them out of it. Mm -hmm. And the way you were able to counter uh, the Deathwing, it was like every, and you know, everybody is aware of how Deathwing's played and how he has to charge up all of his abilities. But you guys played really wise around the Deathwing, you know, so that multiple people, other than a couple of times, got caught by the stuns or the breath weapon. So really good kudos mm -hmm. to you guys. What was your yeah, thought on uh, the map? Well, game two for us, like, you know, we lost game one. You know, we're all playing, like I said, different roles than we used to. So there was kind of a bit of a, a negative mindset going into game two. And so right. when we lost stitches, I just told everybody, I'm like, look, at this point, we're not trying to win. We're just trying to have fun. Because, um, you know, stitches isn't like... A real tank, you know what I mean? Like you don't right. you don't take him when you're trying to be super competitive. Um, yeah, but you did a good so, job on him. Some of those hooks. Yeah, yeah that it, that like I said, that was just like okay, now we're gonna have fun, and if we win, cool, we're back in it, and if we don't, hey, we had fun, right. and and that's essentially what we did. We told ourselves, and we won game two, and then going into game three, it was the same thing. Like, hey guys, even if we don't win, you know, just have fun, and you know, that I feel like we play our best when we're having fun. So, I think every team, best. you know, when when they're having fun, you know. Is you know, if you can play the game, create success, and have fun while doing it, I mean, there's almost a no stress environment. Everybody's relaxed, and you know, everybody's just on point with what they want to do. So I think going into your team saying let's just have fun um, was great. I mean, it really gave to a, a really good series that we watched tonight with you guys. Yeah, and, it was it was a lot of fun. Yes, and I I believe uh, Phoenix Rising. Um, Really, like I, I know your team and I know you and such, so I, I'm glad they got to play against you and um, make it a challenge, right? Because I know they're a new team to the NGS, and I mean, for good or bad, it's going to help build their confidence, right? And you guys still I mean, pulled off the W. They should absolutely be confident. That was, we never felt, you know, in control, and, and, We've had a couple games this season where by game three, we were like, okay, we're in control, like for sure. Um, and that game could have gone either way. Um, so I definitely think, you know, Phoenix Rising should be very, very proud of themselves. Um, oh, 100%. I mean, both you guys, like both teams um, and all its members in the org, I mean, put on a great match for the fans to watch tonight, you know, for yeah. the Nexus game series. And I mean... I don't think, uh, well, definitely not your team as the winner, but I don't think Phoenix Rising, I'll take nothing away from them for what they've, you know, pulled off tonight. I mean, they they made probably one of the best Division E matches that I've been able to watch so far, you know? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. They were, they were definitely exciting. Okay, well, I don't, unless you have other points um, that you'd like to talk about or just share, um... I'll let you go and enjoy with your team, and I will allow you to do your shoutouts, and then I will close off my stream. Cool. So uh, I'll just shout out first and foremost my team. You know, I love you guys. Thank you so much for for having fun and you know uh, uh, getting better with me. Um, you know, thanks for our subs for showing up today and, and really really putting it in. That uh, that helps a lot for us. 
Um, I want to thank you, Sparhawk, you know, and thanks for casting. Always good to hear from you. Always a pleasure. Um, yeah, I got to thank Phoenix Rising. That was probably one of the funnest games I think we've had this season. Um, oh, good. Good, good, good. So I'm, I'm really glad, you know, that we got to play them and that they showed up. Um, and then, you know, thanks to everybody watching. Awesome. Okay, well, tell your team. Um, like I said, uh, great games uh, from your team tonight. Looking forward to seeing what else you guys, what your team's able to bring. As the season starts to wind down, we get into the playoffs. Again, uh, tell Peach, or if Peach, if you're still in chat, I want to say um, you're a Lucio play. Mad respect. Uh, mad crush. And you played it really well. Um, so yes, I will let you go and enjoy with your your family demon. And um, mm -hmm. have yourself a great night. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thanks again, man. You have a great night. You too. Cheers. All right, bye. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Just let me put some music going in the background while we round this out. All right. So we had an exciting match between Phoenix Rising and the Baddest Dudes with the win going over to the Baddest Dudes to pull out the victory. I give nothing bad to say about the performance of Phoenix Rising Sapphire. As well, yes, and as well as the, you know, the, the time change for letting me know. Um, overall, good game by everybody. I enjoyed the heck out of it, and I'm looking forward to seeing what both teams are able to do in the future. So on that note, you know, throw a quick commercial on, and again, my next cast that's confirmed is Tuesday night with Sapphire taking on uh, the Ice Crown Citadel. So that should be another great series. Um, so yeah, let me run a promo to some music and I will see you guys in the nexus. <laughs>